This is one of multiple videos discussing SDN, network programmability, network automation, overlays and related technologies. For years, it's been common practice in compute or server deployments that you buy your hardware from one vendor, which could be HPE or Dell. You get your operating system from another vendor. So for example, you may want to run Microsoft Windows or Linux or VMware ESXi. And then you get your applications from a third vendor or perhaps use open source software such as Apache. So you're getting your hardware from one vendor, your network operating system from another vendor, and your applications from a third vendor. In traditional networking, a monolithic proprietary stack is used. You buy your hardware, your operating system, and your applications from a single vendor, which could be Cisco, it could be HPE, it could be Arista, it could be Juniper. You're locked in to a proprietary network stack. That was true in the past in servers, but it hasn't been that way for a long time. So why in networking are we still running proprietary hardware, proprietary operating systems, and proprietary applications? As an example, the Cisco IOS can only run on certain hardware architectures. Cisco Nexus operating system runs on certain hardware. The Cisco IOS XR runs on certain hardware. HPE Comware is different to HPE Provision or Aruba. The applications that the operating system support are different. So if you want to run EIGRP or BGP, you need to be careful about the hardware and operating system that you purchase. That's not true in a compute environment. In a compute environment, you have options. You may want to run Microsoft Windows or Linux or VMware ESXi. Why aren't we running Linux on network devices in the same way as servers? Well, a lot of companies are doing this already. A famous example is Google. Google have, for a number of years, been running their networks on Merchant Silicon. In other words, they have built their own hardware platforms. They found that there were limitations in networking devices. As they scaled compute and storage, the cost per unit went down, but that wasn't true in networking. So they found that they had more control, better choices, and lower costs by creating their own switches. Google aren't the only ones. Facebook have created their own hardware switches, and they've taken it a step further they've open sourced their hardware switches. This is an example of Backpack, which is their second generation modular switch. What's really nice about Backpack and the other Facebook switches is you can now buy Facebook switches from vendors such as Cumulus. So rather than having to try and source a manufacturer in China, as an example, to create a switch for you, you can buy this through a vendor such as Cumulus. But you don't have to do that. You could build your own switch. Other cloud companies such as LinkedIn have also created their own switches. So they've got this project where they are decoupling the switching hardware and software. This has been a trend in recent years where we've got disaggregation of switches or decoupling of the hardware from the software also called bare metal switches or white box switches. Why are you locked into a proprietary model in networking, whereas when you buy servers or PCs, you're not locked into a proprietary model? Even companies such as Microsoft now offer Linux on switches through their software for open networking in the cloud or Sonic open source project. Today, you have a lot of options. You can use Open Network Linux, which is similar to running Ubuntu. Canonical have also announced that they support a version of Ubuntu which runs on white box switches. So snappy Ubuntu core can run on your network switches. Again, this is the disaggregation of the network operating system 
In the past, the switch and network operating system were proprietary and integrated. This has moved to white box switches running a operating system such as Linux, in this case Ubuntu Core, and then applications on top of it. You can run various applications such as Quagga, which is used for routing on top of white box switches. Or you can get a Linux-based operating system from a company such as Cumulus or Pika 8 or Big Switch. This model is similar to Red Hat. Rather than using an open source operating system with no support, you may want to get commercial support from a company such as Cumulus. I'm going to discuss some of the white box network operating systems now. If you want a more comprehensive list, have a look at packet pushes. They mention Cumulus Linux from Cumulus Networks, Big Switches, Switch Lite Operating System, Open Network Linux, Pika 8, Dell, and IP Infusion. Who knows, maybe one of these days, Cisco will allow you to run their operating system on white box switches. That hasn't happened yet at the time of this recording, but companies such as Arista allow you to run their operating system on white box switches. And you can even run the Arista EOS operating system in a Docker container. So the disaggregation or separation of hardware and software is here today and you have a lot of options. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.